After a week of Davis Cup for the men post US Open and not too many of the ladies playing this week, rankings have kind of been a little bit weird this week. A lot of players outside of the top 10 have done well on the ladies side, on the men's side, nothing's changed. But let's go have a look at the players who actually won tournaments last week. There's only two tournaments last week, and both of them were on the WTA, starting with the San Diego Open. WTA 500 event, Krajikova getting a three-set win over Kennan, 6-4, So both of them got a big boost in the rankings, especially Krajikova, who has had a bit of a roller coaster of a year. Then over in Japan, Kruger gets her first WTA title against Zhu, the Japan Women's Open, 6376 to lift her first big trophy, and both of those players who made the final actually got a boost in the rankings as well. Let's start with players outside the top 10 that have done well this week. Starting with Zhu, she goes up to 31 in the world, a career high for her, four sports higher than last week. She's having a really good season. Starting at the start of the year at the Australian Open, and she's continued that throughout the season, almost in the top 30. Sophia Kennan goes up 40 spots to number 53 in the world after making the final of San Diego, so a huge boost for her. And Kruger, she goes a career high, number 73 in the world, 50 spots higher than last week. So the three finalists from last week getting a big boost in the ranking with a couple of career best rankings for some. Some of the players have fallen down out of the rankings. Bagu goes down to 61 in the world, 12 spots lower than last week. Siniakova drops down 35 spots to 89 in the world. And Fruvatova goes down 48 spots to 116 outside of the top 100 for the first time in a while. So unfortunately, she's going the wrong direction with rankings. That's because they all lost points from this time last year. So some big movements in the rankings there for some. All right, let's start on the ladies' side of things. And there are a couple of changes to the top 10, but nothing up the top with Sabalenka still at number one, Fiontek at two, Goff at three, and they're not playing next week. So there won't be much change over the next few weeks you would expect because unfortunately they're not playing in Guadalajara. But we do have a change in the middle with Pagula going up one spot to number four and pushing Rabakina down to number five. That's because Rabakina lost points from this time last year. So a little bit of a change there. And again, those five players are not playing in Guadalajara next week. So Pagula's going to lose a lot of points because she won last year's Guadalajara. So expect her to drop again, but no change really to the top of the top until we get to the Asian swing. Bondrusova stays at number six, Jabur at number seven, Mukova at eight, Zachary at nine. But we have a change down the bottom with Krajikova pushing Garcia out of the top 10. She goes up three spots after winning San Diego. And of course, Garcia has had such a bad season starting from really the start of the year after she won the WTA finals. It's all been downhill with not much to talk about and now she's out of the top 10 which is kind of crazy considering how good she was this time last year getting back into the top 10 for the first time in a while so Krajikova she's back in the top 10 for the first time and let's see whether or not she can get to the finals race as well going over to the finals race now and still only four players qualified Sabalenka, Fiontech, Goff, Rabakina they take up the top four spots Pagula not too far behind at number five with Von Drusseva at six, Mukova at seven, Jabur stays at number eight, Keys at number nine, and Kvitova at number 10. Remember, the top eight players qualify for the tournament, so there's only four spots left, and Keys and Jabur really have to do well this week in Guadalajara so they can either cement their spots, or for Keys is to get back into that top eight like she was at the start of the season, but it's really starting to shape up now. We've only got a handful of tournaments left until the WTA finals will be confirmed. Over on the men's side of things, and like I said, they played Davis Cup last week, which is worth no points. So everyone either had a rest or some of them play for their countries. Djokovic did play for his country, got the win, but didn't get anything for it. Stays at number one, though, with Alcris at two, Medvedev at three, Runa at four, and Tsitsipas at five. Both of them played at the Davis Cup as well for their countries, but not in the big world group. They were playing sort of the qualies, I guess, for Denmark and Greece. So they played, but they obviously didn't get a rankings boost. Rublev at six, Sinner at seven, Fritz at eight, Rude at nine, and Zverev rounds out the top 10, but we do have a few of those players playing next week. Zverev being the big one next week playing in Asia. So we'll see whether or not he can get further into the top 10 10 in his rise back after that horrible ankle injury of last year. Going to the race of the finals, and again, no changes with only three players qualified. Djokovic, Elkaraz, Medvedev. They're the top three, all qualified for the end of year event. Five spots left up for grabs. Sinner's just behind the qualification line, which is about 5,000 points. So he's not too far behind. Rublev at five, City Pass at six. Runa at 7, Zverev at 8, and like I said, Zverev playing next week is going to be huge to try and get himself further in to that top 8. Fritz is just behind at number 9, and Rude rounds out the top 10 for this week, but it's really starting to shape up now, and only two massive tournaments left before the end of year finals. Of course, we've got Shanghai coming up in a few weeks, and also Paris to end the year, so it's going to be a really exciting finish, with still five spots up for grabs and a lot of players in contention. So those are the rankings for this week. Not too exciting. I mean, on the women's side, there was a couple of changes here and there. Nothing on the men's side to talk about, but of course, the Asian swing starts next week for the men, and of course, Guadalajara for the ladies is going to be massive. We're going to see some big changes, not so much because we have the best players playing. In fact, Guadalajara might be the weakest WTA 1000 of the year, 
but it's a great chance for the players outside the top 10 to maybe get into the top 10 and kick some of those players that are not playing out of that top 10 or even a race to the finals like Keys, for example. But let me know down the comments below. Are you shocked about anything in the rankings this week? Are you disappointed that some players are not as high as you expected or are you kind of content with it? How do you feel about the race to the finals for both the men and the women? Do you like the top eight so far? Would you be happy to see those players play or do you want to see somebody else in that top eight contention? They're the rankings for this week. Not too much to talk about this week in the ranks.